Hi there, welcome back. This is Ray Missick, named for Stencil Girl Products, and I want to talk to you about snipping the masks from some delicate stencil mask combinations. Particularly today, I'm going to be showing you on the Botanical Study Collection. So the first thing I'm going to do, since this is a 9 by 12, is cut apart the individual pieces. Not only does this make it easier to separate the masks, I can use the individual stencils in my work, on my jelly plate, in my journals, easier than I could if they were all attached to the 9 by 12 housing. I don't use um, a paper trimmer to do this because the stencils are situated in a way that I would um, trim some of them if I did this. So I just kind of cut them apart with scissors, free form, to give me enough of a block on the side um, to produce nice stencil marks when I use the individual stencils. And then once I'm done, it'll make it easier to cut apart the masks as well. And the masks are pretty delicate, so I wanted to show you on camera just a few tips for getting them apart. The number one tip I can offer you is patience. It's gonna require a little time to snip these apart, and you're gonna want some fine tip scissors to do this. So not the big pair that you would use to cut apart, but something with a smaller, sharper tip, maybe even um, your stitching scissors and the first thing I do is kind of take a peek at them and see where this small teeny tiny line is that attaches them to the actual stencil it's just a very tiny piece of plastic and the best way to do this is to gently separate the mask from the stencil I use my finger to kind of put between the two so that I get a better look at where these little pieces of plastic are and then I can use the tip of my scissors to just snip them apart. Depending on how big the mask is, you may have several of these and so it's easy to miss some, especially in the really detailed areas, um, which I'll show you on a larger mask after this. But this was a good one to begin with because it, it didn't have a lot of them. So as I'm working to snip them, I'm kind of moving the stencil around to get a better view of where these small pieces are. And then I am also freeing up more space as I go to allow me to manipulate that a little bit more. And then as you go, it becomes easier and easier to snip those small pieces. In the beginning, like I said, patience is going to be the best tip. The second tip I can offer is to use the tip of your scissors to kind of gauge where you're going to have to um, either push that stencil forward or move it back in order to get your scissor tip in there. Now with delicate stencils, pulling them out is another challenge after they've been snipped and a lot of times you'll find when you're going to do that that you'll catch one or two that you missed and this is the opportunity to get those last couple snips in. When you're separating the mask from the stencil, it's important to use um, care, but um, again, patience, pulling them apart. You don't want to tangle them, especially if they have a lot of really delicate lines like these do. So um, this is a project in itself. I promise you the end results with using them is really worth the housekeeping to get them apart. Um, and as you can see, there are very delicate lines there, but it wasn't too bad to snip them. So if your scissor tips aren't sharp, you might want to look for another pair. There are also going to be times when you use the back of your scissors, so check those out before you start. Again, here's a large mask, very delicate, lots of small pieces, and I use my finger to kind of manipulate those pieces, pulling them to the front or pushing them to the back and kind of rotating it till I get the feeling it's the best place for me to put my scissors in and snip it. And you can see there that that one freed up. Now on a bigger section like this, it's easier to get your finger behind the stencil, or the mask rather, and push it forward. And then you'll see those lines very easily and be able to snip them. Now the more places you free up as you go, the easier it gets. This stencil, or mask in particular, will become tangled easily. So again, use caution. 
here I'm pushing the petals to the back so that I can easily see that line and snip it. And each time I'm freeing up more of the mask, giving myself more room to work. I try to concentrate on one area at a time because it makes it easier. And then I leave a lot of the really delicate areas, say the center of this mask where all the stems meet the roots till the last um, section of snipping because it becomes a little bit easier then to manipulate. So I'll just keep rotating the stencil as I go and looking for those small, tiny pieces of plastic that are holding this mask into the stencil. Now there you can see I had to use the back of my scissors to get that one and that's okay. You just really want to go slowly so you don't inadvertently snip part of your stencil apart. There you go. Push the stencil or the mask to the back so that you can see that line and then just snip with the tip of the scissors. And if it helps, I like to kind of hold what I've snipped in my hand so I don't accidentally cut it and that way I can um, have better control of what I'm doing. So the more and more I snip, the more freedom I have to manipulate that mask as I'm going. And I just continue to work around each section until I have most of them done and then I'll start to punch the mask out and allow myself to see any small pieces that I might have missed. Again, working carefully as I go so that I don't inadvertently snip part of my mask, but also so that I am keeping my mask from getting too tangled as I work. As I go, I try to pull the mask out of the way, like I said, and this way too, I'm able to um, see some of those pieces that I've missed. And I'll just keep rotating the stencil, mostly so that I can get a better angle for snipping. I don't want to not turn it because then I'm having too far of a reach when I'm trying to get to the inside section of this. So here we get down to where it's a little bit more detailed around the roots. So as I'm snipping, I'm trying to hold the other pieces out of the way. And again, I'm using my fingers as a backdrop so that I can see any small lines that I might have missed, keeping it gathered in my hand and untangled as I go. Any tiny, tiny lines, just be careful to move slowly so you don't snip them apart from your mask like we talked about. And then just gently work your way around. Again, like I said, it's a lesson in patience, but in the end you'll have these beautiful, very delicate, intricate stencils and masks to work with. So I hope those couple tips helped and that you have fun using your study collection once you've separated them. So happy creating!